Greetings and welcome to our first video of 2024. We hope you all are doing great so far. We are just sitting here and just thinking about all the exciting things that lays ahead of us this year. But first, as we are recuperating by visiting family in California. And their pets. And their pets. <laughs> we thought that we would look back to 2023 and share what we have learned by answering questions that a lovely community have sent us. You know, the ins and outs of cottagecore content creating and the balance between slow living and creative burnout. But first, in case you're new here, my name is Jonas. And I'm Lindsay. And this is Olive. <laughs> and this is It's a Charming Life. And we would love for you to stick around and subscribe on our channel and join our cozy cottage club that we have here. Yeah, we have a cozy time. So why don't you go and pour yourself a nice cup of tea mm -hmm. and let's have a cozy chat, shall we? Yes. Cheers! <laughs> so perhaps you've also felt heavy hearted like we have with so much sadness going on in the world. As creatives and empaths, we felt a little lost, like what we do is kind of pointless amidst so much suffering in the world. We're so thankful for what we get to do together and we will continue to create because we always hope that Charming Life will be a cozy spot that feels like a warm hug. So we had a very busy 2023 filled with many highs and many lows and filled with lots of adventures. We thought it'd be fun to share a recap with a highlight reel from all the short videos that we made last year that you might not have seen if you're not following us on Instagram. So let's roll the clip. We started the new year in Southern California where we spent time visiting family for the holidays. We got to explore Los Angeles and we went to the beach and went antiquing and even Disneyland. It was really magical. When we got back to the cottage, we welcomed spring by refreshing the decor. We all got into gardening and learned how to be a wildflower. In April, we had a short spring break trip to Florida. We met up with family there and was fortunate to experience Walt Disney World for the first time, which was a dream come true. We loved the flower and garden festival at Epcot and exploring the animal kingdom. Then on Mother's Day weekend, my parents came to visit with their pets and we had a special tea party in the cottage garden. Our summer began with the discovery of my passport being expired. We had to rush to a passport office that had an opening in New Hampshire, which took us to the charming town of Portsmouth, which reminds us of Cabot Cove and the coastal grandma vibes. We were lucky to still make it to Sweden to celebrate midsummer and spend time with family. We visited a few fairytale castles and a seaside postcard location. Our autumn began rather early in August with prepping for a pumpkin carving class in the start of September. Around our wedding anniversary, we went to our first New York Ren Fair and it was magical meeting up with friends there. Spooky season at the Cobweb Cottage feels like a monster mash. Our October in Sleepy Hollow was the most legendary yet. We went to the first Headless Horseman Ball then there was the biggest Terrortown Halloween parade that Sleepy Hollow Country has ever seen. The whole Monster Squad was there to celebrate. In November, we always find ourselves wandering cemeteries. We collaborated with local storytellers to tell the other legend of Sleepy Hollow, Holda the Witch. We had a last minute getaway with family that was in the area and we went to the Berkshires of Massachusetts during peak foliage, which was so beautiful. We spent Thanksgiving in Connecticut 
where it felt like we stepped into a Hallmark movie when we went Christmas shopping in Old Wethersfield, which is a real filming location. We ended the year with one of our biggest videos yet that celebrated the bicentennial of Twas the Night Before Christmas in Sleepy Hollow Country. And now Sleepy Hollow is getting ready for its 150th year celebrations, so let the festivities begin. So that was the highlights of the year, but what you don't always see is the many, many hours that we put into making the videos and running our small shop and pretty much everything in between yeah. is a lot of things for just two people. And I have to admit that we did not always do a good job of balancing everything, which led to severe burnout many times, both physically and mentally. Also going back to 2022, we had some upsetting things happening where our personal boundaries was not respected, to put it mildly. We felt helpless understanding these growing pains and we knew we had to do some positive changes, but we didn't really know where to start. But today we feel in much better place to share from as we started therapy. This brings us to the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp, which is revolutionizing therapy access through technology. We invite you to click the link in the description to join us and 4 million other people who have used BetterHelp to start living a happier and healthier life. With BetterHelp, the hassle and stress of finding a therapist the traditional way is eliminated. It's all online and all you have to do is sign up, take a quiz, and BetterHelp pairs you with a therapist from their vast network and if the match isn't right, you can easily switch therapists within the network. I was perfectly matched with my therapist right away based on my specific needs. It's so simple and easy to communicate with your therapist through either video calls, phone calls, and even text. I've personally felt a big change with therapy in my life. It's helped me navigate through periods of creative burnout and most importantly taught me ways to implement change without overwhelming myself as well as self-care and discovering healthier ways to live. This journey is deeply valuable for my mental health and has profoundly impacted my life. I'm so grateful to BetterHelp for its role in making therapy more accessible. By clicking the link in the description, you not only help support our channel, but you get a 10% discount with your first month of therapy through BetterHelp. If you give it a chance, we really hope that it'll be as life-changing for you as it has been for us. Thank you BetterHelp for sponsoring this video and supporting our channel. So it's kind of become a little New Year tradition for us to do a little Q&A where we answer questions from our wonderful community. So thank you for sending those in. And what is the first question, Jonas? What changes did we do in 2023 that have improved our life and that we also will bring into 2024? So we started to realize that our personal lives were kind of consumed with our online lives, our business, our YouTube channel, and social media, we couldn't really see the distinction between the two anymore after a while, and that didn't feel very healthy. And mm. we realized that we needed to find some hobbies that were kind of outside of what we do online. Yeah, like a hobby that we didn't feel like we had to film or, or take photos of. And it really helped a lot. Another thing we did was set more business hours for ourselves with our online interactions you know don't answer emails after a certain time of the day mm. and or try to stay off social media in the evenings just setting healthier ways to kind of have our personal time and also keep one day a week phone free yes that's another huge one to really like reset uh, at the beginning of the week and since you do the editing of the video you work a lo lot with one video that we put out Mm -hmm. to the world you felt more vulnerable yes. uh, that's why i started to to answer the comments and yes. i feel like i was in a different headspace than you were because mm -hmm. let's face it the video is your your child <laughs> after true. working with it so very so much protective i guess yeah and, and vulnerable if you comment and get the reply it's from me it's from jonas now <laughs> you give me the the highlights i give you the, the highlights so, and anything i might need to know that could help improve our video making so it was hard for me to let go of at first but honestly it became so much uh, better for us the other huge thing we did last year was we started to only make two videos a month um instead of once a week which is like a really crazy schedule mm. to create long form content so we have been so much happier in such a better headspace with doing that it gives us more time to work on our ideas and execute them how we want. Don't you feel like we 
we do a better job when you when you don't have to rush the, in the same way. We weren't giving ourselves enough time for unexpected things to happen. And when we constantly found ourselves so overwhelmed, always feeling behind, we eventually, after some burnout, realized that we weren't giving ourselves enough wiggle room, enough time to bounce back. Just yeah. Because life will happen <laughs> no matter what. Sometimes as creatives, we can constantly feel like we're just pouring out, out our cup. And when the cup gets empty, what happens, Jonas? Nothing. <laughs> I said it before and I, I say it again that cups should be filled with tea. Constantly. 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 <laughs> So, bottomless cups. <laughs> bottomless cups of tea. So here at Charming Life, you know we love a nice cup of tea or coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's a great example of that you have to, you, if you keep pouring yourself out, you won't be able to make nice things. You won't be able to be mm -hmm. a, a nice person if you keep just pouring yourself out and, and not refilling your cup, right? Yeah. And the other big thing I learned last year was to stop comparing myself to others success or what it looks like to me that everyone's on their own timeline and everyone has their own story so there's no point in comparing yourself to somebody else that you feel like is mm. doing better than you are you just have to walk your own path next question is what are your personal goals for 2024 uh, i promised myself to give myself more time to create art and i'm gonna also learn more recipes Oh, yes. New recipes. Mm -hmm. My personal goal is first and foremost to take better care of my health and put it first. We haven't been always great about that mm. either. It always feels like there's something more important to do, but there really is nothing more important than taking care of your health first. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Yes. The other goal I have is to take more time to learn new techniques for filming and video editing. We are both self-taught pretty much with everything that we do and sometimes you just feel like there must be a better way to go about this than driving myself crazy doing this the hard way. <laughs> I mean it's great to teach yourself but I also think it'd be nice to take time to learn new things and build more confidence that way. Mm -hmm. It's an investment to invest in new knowledge. The goal we have together is to yeah. finally start working on some of the books that we've been planning in our heads for a very long time and that a lot of you have requested too. Yeah, we can't wait to just uh, make something out of it. Yes, we think it'd be really fun to work on like a long-term project since a lot of what we do feels very short-term. Mm -hmm. The next question is, what is your number one way to deal with creative burnout? My way is to either moan or bake. <laughs> and I think baking tastes way better than moaning. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I just uh, find me dealing with stress in, in the kitchen. It's like running off my shoulders, I think. So how about you? So for me, it is all about just you going out and finding new inspiration. When I'm feeling burnt out, I feel like just sitting around overthinking things never makes me feel less burnt out. I have to just kind of go out, get fresh air and find fresh inspiration around me. What is the one thing you do to recenter after a difficult or stressed situation? Always good to take a deep breath. Try to just feel grounded, feel back in the moment if your mind is going too fast or your emotions are all over the place. I've been learning so much through therapy is learning how to not react, but respond to the situation. Because usually when you react, you overreact and just kind of blow things out of proportion. Mm. When you just try to breathe, recenter, it's easier to respond to the situation in a way that you, you know, won't regret as much. <laughs> yeah. And if it's someone else in this problem of yours, you don't try to speculate about what they think or, you know, what you, you never know the... Just ask or talk to yeah, them just about ask. it if you can when you calm down. Yeah. Don't try to assume that you know what they're thinking. Things might look different the next day. Very true. The next question is, why did you start YouTube and have you thought about quitting? 
That's a tough one. <laughs> but why don't we give some of the origin? So we first started our channel. It was more of like a diary of our lives as a Swedish American couple and all, all of our travels and adventures. But then when we moved to Copa Cottage, we kind of shifted our focus to more vintage style and slow living. At the time though, we had full-time jobs, so we didn't have a whole lot of time to make do videos how we wanted to. Then when we lost our jobs during a lockdown, we, like a lot of other people, had time to make more videos and it just seemed to really resonate with cottagecore and what a lot of people were experiencing. And during that time we got to embrace the seasonal and slow living lifestyle at the cottage that we had always dreamed of. And now we've been doing this for the last couple of years. It's crazy. It's so lovely to work together. Yes, yeah, so that's the best yeah. part. The hard part and why we've thought about quitting sometimes is just because there are so many hats that you have to wear mm -hmm. to be content creator. Yeah, one hard thing is this thing about the algorithm. I'm sure you heard that mentioned many times. The constantly changing algorithm that you have to do this and that to even be seen. That's why it's so important as the viewer, if you really appreciate a channel, to share the video and like it. Little things like that can just really make a big difference to help the videos give them their best chance because there's just so much content out there and sometimes you just feel like you're at the mercy of the algorithm mm. and you can just get drowned in everything else. So it's really frustrating to pour your soul <laughs> into videos and then feel like they don't get the attention that you were hoping for. And then now after we've had a chance to do this, full time for the last couple of years, we've started to notice how it can be really physically demanding too. And it's really started to take a toll on both mm -hmm. of us. Actually, we've both had some kind of health problems arise. We've had to do you know, doctor appointments and physical therapy. And the longest hours is behind the camera and mm -hmm. it's uh, editing and you know, do all that stuff. So we're feeling a lot better. We've been, that's why we've been prioritizing our health more because we realized that we weren't treating our bodies very well and we've been slowly but surely feeling a lot better. Cheers to that. <laughs> the next question is how long does it take to create a video and put it out into the world? Well, it's not instantaneously for sure. Some videos take longer than others. Uh, I would say the kind of holiday videos that we have done takes longer because it requires more planning. Mm. Um, but we almost always write a script. Yeah. We never are completely winging it, even if it might seem like it. I mean, I hope if we do a good job, then it looks natural, it looks effortless, but the reality is that it takes lots of prep, mm -hmm. lots of editing, and the biggest part is actually the post-production. Um, yeah. I guess you could say just, Posting it, sharing it, making sure it gets out to the right audience. Put it out on the blog and uh, all the platforms. It's uh, it's like a web of, <laughs> of like... It's so many steps. It's yeah. way more work than people think really behind this. And as I said before, yeah. it's the real work starts behind the camera when it, everything is filmed. Making your vision come to life, it's a big process. And you're so good to just find the... Uh, the right music and put everything together and oh, thank you. it has that uh, charming feel to it. Oh, thank you. I, I try really hard. I really put my heart and soul into like every video. So it means a lot when people can see that or even if you don't see the effort put into it right away, even if it just relaxes you, takes you into another world, then I feel really happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. The next question is, what is the favorite video you have filmed so far? And if you didn't film videos about your cottage life, what would you do? My favorite videos is probably those that feels like a like a TV episode, mm -hmm. um, like a travel show. Travel show, uh, like we have done a lot from Sleepy Hollow, and uh, during Christmas time, mm. uh, I really like those because it feels like a big body of work that includes more people than ourselves. It's really fun collaborating with others. Yeah. So some of the videos we've been most proud of are. Yeah, the ones where we get to showcase other creatives. You know, sometimes we get bored of 
showing ourselves. <laughs> yeah. So it's been really refreshing to find new inspiration with working with other really creative people. But I must say also uh, the cottage videos is really nice, especially the ones in the springtime. It takes us a long time to film the critters around the cottage, like Tibby the chipmunk and, mm -hmm. and all the birds. Like it might take one or two hours of just waiting yeah. to get the right shot to add to the story. Some of the favorite cottage videos that we've done are the ones that feel like you're watching a vintage storybook. Um, maybe it's based less on reality and more on like this kind of world that we're creating about around Cobweb Cottage. It's been nice like documenting our lives through mm. the seasons at the cottage, but to kind of just go the next step of the evolution, I feel like would be to start kind of telling like a fairy tale story of our Giving lives. Giving the critters a voice. I feel like we're coming to a point where we want to pivot a little bit into making things more cinematic, more storytelling, because at our heart, that's really what we are. We are storytellers. Yeah. And so we want to experiment with that more. Next question is, what is your daily routines and rituals and how do you wind down? So it's been kind of hard to keep a slower routine like what we did in the beginning of lockdown. Things aren't quite like that as much anymore. We are able to visit our families more and but that means less time for other things. At first I felt kind of guilty for not keeping such a slow routine. It's hard to do slow living content when the world is speeding up. This is so true and it feels like life has gone twice as fast as things have started to open up more which is wonderful. We realized that we had to readjust our mindset and our routine. It's all about just finding those mindful moments, creating them in the middle of your day. No matter how busy you are, that is the essence of slow living and you don't have to feel guilty if you're not, you're not just sitting around all day. Mm drinking tea and that's often not what we're doing even if it might look like it because we get to work together and have create our own schedule it's very nice to have that flexibility it makes it easier to you know film d differently depending on the weather that also means that we can swing the other way sometimes where we kind of have zero structure in our schedule mm -hmm. As creative people, you know, that means like sometimes late nights, especially during Halloween season. During Halloween, we become vampires, <laughs> right? Well, you're carving in the studio like really long, crazy mm. hours. And so we do basically turn into vampires. One daily ritual that we always stick to is fika, fika time. <laughs> and I, I, I'm sure many of you have heard what fika is, but if you are new here, I just want to explain that fika is a Swedish phenomenon and it's about uh, wellness in a way that you take time for yourself, pouring down. a cup of coffee, enjoy a little treat with the coffee or mm -hmm. tea and just take that moment for yourself and or with yeah. others. Yes, it's like just kind of grounding yourself in the middle of the day. I mean, it can be any time of day, but we tend to do it in the afternoon when we need mm -hmm. a little pick me up and then we can kind of just like calm down, reconnect, recharge, and then kind of go on with the rest of the day. So fika time is our fika favorite time. daily ritual. That's our best way of winding down. Yeah, of course you can wind down what suits you. There's many ways of doing this. So what was the not so charming moments of the year? Call our channel It's a Charming Life because mm -hmm. we like to look for the bright moments uh, in life and the, find the charms. Life will have ups and downs and what we'd like to call not so charming moments. If we had a crazy experience coming back from Sweden, canceled flights, a heat advisory, lugging our suitcases all around. We were so incredibly tired. Everything was later than we thought it was going to be. So I get in the car to try to go get some food. And it was dark so as soon as the lights came on in the car, I looked around me and I realized the car was completely covered in mildew. <laughs> it was so disgusting. It had disgusting. been a crazy <laughs> rainy time while we were away, so that's a part of it. It had been like moist inside. There was, a, there was a leak, I think. It's a little leak in the trunk. And I run back inside, get like a towel and a mask and just like had to go to the store before it closed and get some food. Yeah, that was quite the experience to come back to yeah. a long, long day. Another one was that we had built a, a bluebird box yeah, and we had put it up in the spring. We actually got not bluebirds, but uh, wrens, house wrens. Mm -hmm. 
and we followed them day by day and they had babies. They were quiet one day and another day went and another day and we got worried. So and, finally uh, checked on them. Yeah, we checked on them and they didn't make it. It was the saddest I don't know thing. what happened. <laughs> Such a sad thing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So we gave them a little burial. <laughs> it was really sad. Mm -hmm. As we've probably mentioned before, is that at Cobweb Cottage, we have had a lot of problems with our heating, but we finally had our boiler replaced. So things were getting a lot better. We were actually so mm. warm in the cottage. I don't know, old house problems. Things happen still. And we would just still occasionally wake up without heat and have to sleep in the cold and no hot water. It's been an ongoing saga no matter what. Sometimes the, just the timing lines up with, for example, like when we were putting out one of our Christmas videos mm -hmm. and I was doing a live premiere like we usually do where you can chat with everyone as it's showing for the first time on YouTube. It was so cold inside the cottage. <laughs> My fingers were frozen. And so I had to sit on the floor huddled around a little space heater and just try to chat and with everyone as the video was premiering. Yeah. And I just thought, this is such a contrast to what this video looks like right now. All warm, haunted feelings. <laughs> and... and here we are, just freezing. The Try reality it. can be way different. Just to give you some ideas of the not so charming moments in life. But sometimes it's the contrast of those that makes the really charming moments so mm. special. Yeah, you value it more. Next question is, what is your favorite season and why? We like all all the seasons. We do. I just have to underline that. We do. We love them all in their own way. I think I would have said fall before I started to carve pumpkins. <laughs> I'm so involved in pumpkin carving in the fall. So it's, it's become a very stressful season yes. for me. I'm like Santa Claus, you know. <laughs> so I would say actually spring have become my new favorite because it's so nice, you know, the the world is warming up and mm. you still have time to plan and prepare you for the busiest season of the year. Were you charging the other battery, by the way? Oh, no. Just Should in case? I? Yeah, run and do it. Come back. Okay. <laughs> I got my stick for a I know. <laughs> Next question. Are you planning on taking any trips this year? And if so, are you planning to film them or just enjoy them for yourself? This year is looking to be quite busy with travel already. Yeah. But we kind of uh, want to keep them a little low of a surprise. Mm -hmm. Uh, and sometimes we do make trips that we don't film. That's one thing that we have learned during the previous year. And it, it's a really nice way of just uh, have a getaway and just and think about these things. Not bring the camera. Yeah, we yeah. learned the hard way. On our anniversary trip, we filmed like three videos and we really were supposed to be <laughs> celebrating our 10 year anniversary. Yeah. I just get excited when we travel to like nice places, but that was a big eye-opener because we didn't feel very rested afterward. Last year, in fact, we did take a getaway that we didn't film anything about. We just enjoyed it for ourselves and that was just so nice. Actually refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> and Jonas, there's a few questions more for you. Are you planning to do any live art classes this year? Well, the previous class I did in Sleepy Hollow last year was such a success and I've had a lot of questions like this so I think the the answer is yes uh, <laughs> we'd love to we haven't planned anything yet it's still in the in the planning stage but uh, yeah. hopefully I say hopefully mm -hmm. I hope we can do it again it's nice to know that it's something people are interested in and we had a great you know um first try of it last year in collaboration with the historical society we couldn't have done it without them so we shall see we shall see next question is what do you enjoy most about living in the sleepy hollow area would you say that living in a place filled with so much history and literary significance is inspiring for you does it help with avoiding creative burnout i would say like living in in a place like sleepy hollow area is uh, definitely open up the imagination yes because it has a rich history and it's a literary based of, of you know the legend of sleepy hollow it's always like something that inspires you no matter what season mm -hmm. you are and it brings a lot of creative people to the area oh yeah and tons. It, so, so it's really nice that brings a lot of fresh mm -hmm. energy when you can meet up with people like that and get new ideas also living in sleepy hollow can be 
very draining. <laughs> it can be overwhelming at some points too. Right? During yeah. the Halloween season. Especially during Halloween. It's easy to feel like we're pulled in so many directions mm. during the Halloween season. So. Yeah, because you want to do everything. So the final question is, what does the new year represent to you? The new year feels like a fresh start, of course. It can feel kind of daunting though to face the blank page, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> the artist worst night, the blank page. <laughs> exactly. But lately I've, I've really enjoyed the slowness that January brings. Process everything that happened the year before and just find better ways of continuing to do things or leaving bad habits behind. You finally learn the go of it and then you start all over. It's a little sad sometimes, but <laughs> at, in the other hand, you you have had the whole year to learn the routines. Mm. So you can, uh, you're up for a good start in January. And how do you check in with yourself to know that you're still continuing down the right path and doing what you want to do? I try to uh, stay in the moment and listen to, can I feel, how do I feel about this? It's a little bit like follow your gut, I think. Mm. I think that's my best tips. Yeah, How about I think you? often we ignore the signals that our body or our soul is kind of giving to us. Mm -hmm. You can get stuck in the same routines that aren't always great for us. Asking ourselves if we still feel fulfilled mm -hmm. with what we're doing, because that, yeah. that can change. Maybe something you were doing before was very life rewarding, but over time it can change and you have to change with it. Life is all about change, mm. right? And, and changes can be scary, but uh, mm. I mean, if it is the right kind of change, it uh, hopefully inspire you to to just learn it, you know, adapt it. There's a quote that I came across from Jimmy Stewart that I've never heard before, and it's so amazing. The secret to a happy life is to accept change gracefully. And that kind of became my, I feel like my quote for the year. <laughs> I think we're heading into the this new year with a lot less burnout. We've come really far with all of that. And it's so much thanks to your support. We just love to have such a support and such followers like you behind us. It's amazing. And that's what makes us want to keep doing this. So thank you so much for all of your questions. Your support means so much to us. And we are so incredibly grateful for this Cozy Cottage Club community. If you like this behind the scenes kind of content where you see more of the creative process, then we want to let you know that we have lots more of that on Patreon that we share every month. And we would love to see you over there in the Cozy Cottage Club. So Jonas, isn't it wild to look back at our year and see how much we, we grew and how much we improved? Sometimes in the moment, it feels like things aren't changing or getting better, but bit by bit, it really can if you yeah. just uh, put in the effort. I'm so happy to say that we're going into this year in a much healthier place than before, with less creative burnout and feeling mm. very hopeful about the future. And it, it's so fun that you can even sometimes look back one video and and uh, feel like you're watching another person. It's so true. So it can be hard for us sometimes to open up in these kinds of videos about more of our struggles because we are changing every day, but it's nice to know that we are improving all the time. Before you leave, let us know in the comment section below what your hopes and dreams are for this year. Thank you so much for joining us here at this cozy fireside chat, and we will see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs> All I see, bye for now. <laughs>